Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is sponsored by Quip. You can get your first refill pack for free at getquip.com slash inside. Hey everyone, welcome back to Inside Gaming Daily 4. You know what day it is. Monday! Hey! We got a clap on Monday. That's what we do. Uh, and to kick off another fine week, one of the finest men in the business has been dropping some mysterious news <laughs> of this weekend at a Comic-Con panel. That's right. Our favorite man himself, Hideo Kojima, once again is confusing us about what the hell his upcoming PlayStation exclusive game, Death Stranding, actually is. And you know what? We love it. We do. We do. Seriously, Given that we still have absolutely no idea what's going on in this game, we'll snap it up like the starving gamers we truly are. So let's get into it, Lawrence. Take us in. Yeah, well, right off the top, well, a shout out to freelancer writer Kalai on Twitter for live tweeting the whole panel. Oh, cool. Most of the info we have right now is courtesy of their coverage. So big ups to you, nice. freelance writer. Hey, throw, throw them some work. Onto the news, though. For starters, Kojima revealed that he was offered Keanu Reeves for the game, but said, no, I want to work with the people I want to work with. So he chose wow. Mads Mickelson instead. What directly. a cool problem to have. I yeah, know, right, right, basically. Mm -hmm. Then again, that might have been before Keanu got his like series of confusing lifts. Uh, <laughs> after E3 and stuff like that, but he went on to say that he wants to work with actors he likes and not once he doesn't. So what? Maybe there's some reverse shots fired there? No, I, I think he probably was just saying that, you know, he's not only he's talking about Keon. I, yeah, I don't think the two statements were explicitly linked. Also, again, this is courtesy of a tweet stream from one person. So a lot of context may have fallen off there, but the facts are he was offered Keon and said, no thanks. So that's kind of interesting. Okay. He wants more auteurs. <laughs> I would say so. Like Matt from the yes. film, uh, was it? Frozen or whatever he made. That's not the only shot that he took against our boy Keanu. Not only is Kojima taking down our breathtaking cyberpunk angel, he also fired at the Battle Royale trend. Wow, nobody does that. Uh, the exact <laughs> quote is, the easiest way to make money is to make a game where everyone is on an island trying to shoot each other. I don't want to make that. What? No one said that before, <laughs> Kojima. Apparently that was followed by mountains of applause. He did it, Kojima. I mean, he did it. He's only brave enough to say it. We'll play every Battle Royale game, but he's right. Yeah. Even if making a Max 3 mobile game is actually probably the easiest method yeah, against right right. Battle Royale still takes some effort, but anyway. Did you just actually Hideo Kojima? <laughs> He just, I'm actually an artist, how dare you? That statement was kind of in context of his new studio. He's basically saying when we're opening something, we have to sure. make money, the way to do that. Yeah, but still, very brave, very strong statements from Kojima, yeah. When asked why it's important for Kojima to not make something that's similar to something that already exists, he said, quote, there's no reason to create something that's already there. I want to create something that gives more inspiration to the world. I could appreciate that statement. For sure. I like that statement a lot. And in the landscape of games where you're delivering packages with a baby strapped to your chest and you can just kind of summon a ladder, there's very few. I guess that's why he made a stranding game, everyone's favorite. Favorite new genre, right? Is it stranding? Is that a new genre? Just wait. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. wait until we get the stranding strand games. There's gonna be a hundred of them next year. Do they have any first person strandings? We One did. versus 99 stranding? Real time stranding? Uh, we did also get some more information about, oh boy, oh, this is exciting. Nicholas Winding Refn's character in Death Stranding. Oh. Is, is there anything in the script anywhere where we explain actually who this man is? He directed Drive, the movie Drive. And a bunch of other stuff that you've never heard of yeah. seen, and a lot of people have said it's either the best movie they've ever seen or the worst piece of garbage yes, that's their right. eyes ever consumed. Uh -huh. Regarding that, that one, Kojima said, Nicholas wanted me to create a character that stands out more than Mads. Oh, wow, jeez. His character is <laughs> Egos yelling at each other, guys. <laughs> his character has died, and he wants to look for his family on the other side for three minutes and resurfaces. Take that, Mads Mikkelsen. Suck it. I mean, You're not popular at all. Whiny Refn also said he thinks his character is the most interesting character in the game. Oh, my gosh. Well, <laughs> These no. guys jizzing all over each other. <laughs> it's it's kind of cool. Like, the character apparently dies every 21 minutes, sees his family for three, and then gets brought back sure, to life. Sure, yeah. No, so. okay. Yeah, it's kind of like cool. a yo-yo thing. It's pretty metal, sure. right? He went on to tell the audience he got involved in the project because he got an email uh -huh. asking if he'd like to meet Hideo Kojima. Hey, you know, Lawrence, I think you get those emails, right? I mean, yeah, pro I just let me Watch check, check. My, yeah, let me check. check my spam Those are scams. I get it. Uh, got one of my drafts. Nope, I'm writing that. Never mind. <laughs> I guess he doesn't have it. I have no idea. Got an auto reply from G2A. Mm. Okay, well, one of the more concrete things we got out of the panel is cover art, though. Oh! Kojima also revealed the Steelbook cover art, which apparently he made himself. He what? sat down and drew it with a pencil and a paper. He's, he's <laughs> sitting in China, he's just he's pressing them all one by one, and he signs every single one because he loves you. Puts on his beanie cap, goes to the park with his crayons. And... Yeah, I mean, if we're being honest here, that just about covers all the hard gaming news that dropped during the panel. There's not there's not a lot here. I mean, yeah, it's a Comic-Con game's, panel. The game's, game's coming yeah. out soon. They don't want to spoil things. Obviously, yeah. they don't have much to say other than you got a baby strapped to your chest and whales kill themselves every 10 years or whatever. But because is a soft boy, as we all know, uh, there's a lot more to him than hard news, right, Lawrence? Pretty much every time he opens his mouth, he says something deep or profound about video games, and it's really hard to not love him for it. Yeah, but sometimes it can border on pretentiousness. Sometimes. sometimes. I mean, he's earned the right. I'll say that much. Uh, for example, in Death Stranding, Sam has a ladder and a rope to help him get around the game world. Seems pretty straightforward, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, wrong, uh -oh. actually. <laughs> Apparently, there's more thought to it than just Sam has to climb, so he needs a ladder. According to an article on Game Rant, those elements 
are actually spiritually inspired by some of Nintendo's oldest work, namely Donkey Kong and Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> what? Respectively, in Donkey Kong, you use ladders to ascend up the girders and stuff That's like right that. Now. Super Mario use rope-like vines to crawl to hidden places and things like that. Apparently, the act of ascending and climbing in those games left a mark on Hideo, who wanted those actions to be reinterpreted in a modern science fiction setting. Whenever you're climbing up ladders and stuff, think about Donkey Kong. You're basically a new Mario. Okay. All yeah. right. Is that deep? I mean, not really. But you know, he wanted to, I guess, pull different mechanics from other games that wasn't shooting, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Like it wasn't like shooting people in the head, which yeah. we all love. But sure. I, I guess that is that is a good question. When was the last time you played a game that isn't centered around shooting or destruction? It makes you think about yeah, things, like right? Tetris. Given that Kojima has previously stated that Death Stranding is about forming connections, that's a stark contrast to most games that are about shooting everything in the head, like Destiny, where you see a bad guy and you go, mm. shoot it till the numbers come out of him. I got he stronger. Purple things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> shoot heads more now. As a result, it's not entirely shocking that Kojima would focus on a non-violent mechanic like climbing or ascending and exploring, as opposed to say, you know, combo systems that let you rip people's arms off for more points. Yeah, then again, for all we know, Death Stranding does have that, and yeah. I hope it does, because I want to rip people's arms off like in Doom. It's awesome. It's very Doom. awesome. Uh, yeah. I want to beat up a giant whale. That'd be cool. <laughs> but there may be more business wisdom behind Kojima's constructive approach beyond just being a contrarian creator, right? It is a bit of Nintendo philosophy behind that, too. Kojima argues that most big entertainment is just meant to be disposable, saying that people just digest and consume. He's right. He's right. Yeah, yeah a lot of popcorn entertainment out there, because that's what people like. Instead, Kojima wants to, quote, make something that's difficult to chow down when you digest my work. What happens when I release my game or when Nicholas releases a movie, we get criticism or praise. Kind of like Adam was saying. Yeah. You either love it or hate it. But you think about it 10 years later, the same as Blade Runner or Space Odyssey. I uh, disagree with that one. I, mm, no one's going to really look at Only God Forgives in 10 years and be like, ooh, that film, was film students might. Maybe, yeah. Uh, I, well, typically what happens is... What Metal, Metal Gear Solid 4? You guys going to be go back and play that one I've a lot? been thinking about Metal Gear Solid 4 a lot. How are you going to play it? I have a fat PlayStation 3. So exactly, I yeah. I was trying to think about that. I'm like, yeah, I'll just download on the... I think it's PS Now might have it. Yeah, maybe. It's Streaming, it's exclusively but... on this one platform. Yeah, what was up with those eggs, Koji? There's live action shots of eggs getting cooked with like a little girl talking over it. Evoking Blade Runner is an interesting choice on his part, given that one of the games is literally Blade Runner. Snatcher. Yep. Well, it's Blade Runner cross Terminator. But basically he just took two popcorn movies and smashed them. Well, Blade Runner's not popcorn, but. I don't, oh, think, yeah. I don't think Kojima likes movies. Uh, <laughs> but like it or not, he's right. Even though Kojima's games can be bonkers sometimes, we're still wondering what the hell is up with those eggs and many other things in Metal Gear. I mean, I'm not. Where's yeah, there were like a lot of TV <laughs> commercials, a lot of live action yeah. stuff inserted in between chapters. I heard so many people tell me it was bad, and I was like, it's nah. not. We're good. It's not good. A lot of questions about age and family and old men kissing each other. Yeah, oh, there's, a there's a shot of that. Raffin couldn't wait to agree and even up the ante on Kojima's lofty statements on creativity. That's right. He dropped the creative hammer by saying, creativity is what moves civilizations forward. We're living in an era where creativity is dictated by algorithms, that it becomes meaningless almost. It's important to counter that. And creativity is an individual experience and a collective medium. I can agree with that. Hard cut to the, the dude getting raped in Valhalla Rising yeah, yeah, in the mud. Exactly. In the mud. <laughs> Raffin went on to say that both creators go out of their way to contradict what is expected or easy in any given time, going so far to label, quote, good taste as a destroyer of creativity. Whoa. I get what he's saying. I would maybe see pop culture instead of good taste. I think that's kind of the idea. Yeah. I, like, I, what's I could, acceptable? I could see, yeah, media copying media because you're doing what's successful, so just do what the other guy right. did, but then it becomes very samey, and then there's nothing new. Now it's just making whatever works on a given algorithm, like Netflix or YouTube. You have to title videos a certain way, you have to make them a certain way. Sure. And yeah, it can bend your pure creative intent, but you always have to meet the market somewhere. If you're making something that no one wants. You're never gonna make any money. Look, this show would have never worked 15 years ago on G4. I would have to be a woman and you'd be an intern. <laughs> Ruffin said simply, you either love or hate it because that's life. I mean, I'm not sure exactly that's right. There's but some, okay. some dad talk going on. Yeah, I I know. Know. Oh, yeah. But don't let all his highfalutin art talk convince you that Kojima is an out of touch celebrity artist. No, no, no. He spent a moment to describe the significance of Comic-Con to his nerdy soul saying that I'm an otaku and I felt like my teachers and family didn't understand me. I came to San Diego Comic-Con 10 years ago and met a lot of people like me. So I think that's what you'll get from this game. He's just a nerd. Yeah, he's like me. One of us, Google Gobble. He picked an apocalyptic track for his trailer, so that's a pretty good start. <laughs> And saying that, yeah, you are kind of like me, because I listened to that a lot when I was in college. <laughs> Death Stranding sure is kind of shaping up like one of our favorite Japanese animes. Yeah, absolutely. It's crazy yeah. convoluted. It probably has a lot of like religious theology junk crammed in it. It's got a crazy complicated world that half the point is just figuring out the rules of the land before you can even get into the human drama of it. A lot of DNA in common there. So how you doing, Kojima? Hi hey, how you doing? <laughs> trying to figure out if he's lost in a self-indulgent creative spiral or if sure. he's still a grounded creator that's trying to make a unique but digestible thing for his audiences. It's hard to say. We're going to find out when the game comes out.
I'm really excited I, about I'm, it. I'm gonna go ahead and say Hideo Kojima is the Quentin Tarantino of video games. Hmm, that's a safe bet. I could say that. Although Tarantino, I feel like makes movies that are a little more popular than Kojima makes games. Oh no, no, for sure. But I think he found a way to market artsy stuff. I get what you're saying. But also when he's like, hey, did you know there's a man who sold the world cover by some guy you've never heard of? I'm gonna put it in my game and yeah. it's pretty rad. And I said, you know what, you're right. Well, even down to like the weird obsessiveness with cinema and injecting that into everything that you make is just a constant love letter to movies. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of DNA in common there. I sure. can't tell you how many film students have told me Tarantino's ripped off so many other movies. And I'm like, yeah, but he did it well. Yeah, and he was also, the, he's one of the only guys in Hollywood who saw those movies and understands what made them what they are. Right, and what's the difference between homage and ripoff? I'd yeah. say Tarantino's definitely in homage territory given the love that oozes out of every crack of all of his movies for the movies that he's basing them on. Kojima will forever win a love-hate relationship in my heart because of things like Metal Gear Solid 2, where he saw the success of the first game and said, I could just ride this or I could just flip it. It and say, and basically give everyone a middle finger, including the gaming industry it's pretty cool. and the people who love the character Solid Snake. Pretty ballsy. Yeah, pretty cool. Someone doing that at that time and then being so ahead of the curve when he's calling out things like Twitter and YouTube years before they existed. Rah, mind blowing. He totally called that algorithm based uh, information sorting way mm -hmm. before it was a thing. Nobody at the time really had the headspace to wrap their minds around what he was saying in that game, but it ended up being true. So maybe Death Stranding 15 years from now, we'll look back and be like, your eggs were right, Kojima. <laughs> were your eggs right? Dad? <laughs> Death Stranding comes out November 8th for your PlayStation. <laughs> Today's episode of Inside Gaming Daily is sponsored by Quip. These are makers of fine electric toothbrushes and will deliver you new toothbrush heads on a dentist recommended schedule to make sure that your teeth are always clean. Listen guys, guys and girls, gamers of all ages, of all colors, of all creeds, we got too much to consider, okay? We got too much on our plate. We got a lot of games to play. We gotta replay all Kojima's games before Death Stranding comes out. How else are we gonna understand all of the fine artistic points. Let Quip take brushing your teeth off your plate. That's right, the brush itself has a built-in timer to make sure that you spend the right amount of time brushing every part of your mouth. That's two minutes total, 30 seconds for every quadrant, and they'll ship you new brush replacement heads on a dentist recommended schedule to make sure you're never burning out that toothbrush. I've been using the same keyboard for like 10 years. I had to clean it this weekend. Things get old, they break down. So does your toothbrush head. It's gonna not clean as well if it's a few months in. That's why Quip can take that off your plate and make sure that you're always using fresh brush heads to make sure your teeth stay in your face so you keep eating those Hot Pockets, slamming that Mountain Dew, and beating those video games. And you can get your first refill pack for free. Uh, you can get that at getquip.com slash inside. Once more, you can get your first refill pack for free at getquip.com slash inside right now. Thank you for the sponsorship, Quip, and thank you for supporting our sponsors, Inside Gaming Viewer. Coaching them over the past two to three years, and all that stuff's actually kind of tying together now. Tying together, ropes. It'll make sense later. Well, yeah, sure. uh, so sure. yeah, for starters, the game is set in the actual United States, like oh. it's real America, oh. but not the version we're used to. It's post-apocalypse. Of course, of course. But it is. not your normal like Mad Max post-apocalypse. This one's different. But wait, the cello band doing the music.